Hi class, um, so for my organism today that I will be talking about, it is the infamous jellyfish. So I'm just going to dive into some classifications of a jellyfish. So their kingdoms are the Animalias, their phylums are the Zedarians, and their genuses are Chrysoras. And there are countless species of jellyfish, um, but the most common ones um, are moon jellies. So jellyfishes, they're practically found in any ocean. Um, they do prefer warmer waters, so most ideally tropical environments would be the place where they thrive the most. And they can easily adapt to their environment, which benefits them tremendously throughout their life. So just to dive into jellyfish, we're going to start internally. So jellyfishes do not have brain, um, a heart, or any lungs. Um, essentially, their skin is their most important feature, which allows them to absorb oxygen to essentially breathe. And if you've ever seen a jellyfish before, you've seen that they're pretty much almost translucent, and that's due to the fact that they're 95% water, and that helps them to camouflage from any potential predators. So the body of a jellyfish is um, radial symmetry and they are divided into three main parts. So the first one is the umbrella, the second one are the oral arms, which are located around their mouths, and their stinging tentacles. So the radial symmetry helps um, them detect food or even respond to food, and it helps them stay away from danger. So it's basically, you've, they can see danger coming, which essentially helps them to survive, and quickly camouflage and not be seen or not be eaten <laughs> so and with their tentacles um they do have the ability to sting which helps them um you know scare off any predators if any predators come too close they could just sting them and then they're gone and another thing about jellyfish is that they have muscles which are hard to believe because of their appearance and how translucent they are but they do have really strong muscles which help them to propel through the waters so for larger jellyfish which are mostly adult jellyfish um they do have really good control of their vertical movements when they're swimming through the water um but when jellyfishes are in the stage of the polypee stage which is a stage i'll be going a little bit more in depth about later um they need to be attached to something in the water um they kind of need that support you know when you're a baby you need that support when you're walking but when you're adult, you're good. You can walk independently. So that's how it is for jellyfish. And when they reach that stage of being an adult, they are essentially known as free floaters. So they're basically able to float through the water, not having to attach to anything for support. So for jellyfishes, um, we don't hear much about them being killed or extinct or anything like that. But there's one thing that really can danger them and decrease the number of them on earth and that is because of the toxins in the water and the ocean water so there's many ways toxins can get in the water um first and prime one is pollution um you know with people throwing trash into the water um which is a very big issue that we have um the second one is oral spills and the third one is you know basically any chemicals um any basic chemicals that they can that can be thrown in the water they essentially hurt the jellyfishes and decrease their lifespan. And even in some cases, um, they allow them to not have an offspring. So keep in mind that jellyfishes, their skin is the most important thing to them, considering they don't have any other organs. So they really need to protect their skin and they absorb anything and mostly everything into the water, from the water. So if they're absorbing oils or any chemicals, that can be detrimental to their death. Um, and, you know, even lead to death, which is sad. So, the life cycle of jellyfishes. So, it's pretty simple and straightforward. They do start as an egg, and they go up to a planula, which is um, developed from the fertilized egg. Then they lead into the polypi, into the budding polypi, the aproha, larva, and then finally the medusa stage. Um, and that's where the jellyfish is fully formed, and they're able to form and release any eggs or sperm into the water. And throughout their life cycle, they do undergo two body forms, which are the medusa and the polypi, and they're known as diploids. So some really cool things that I've learned about jellyfishes upon research is that they're actually the oldest multi-organ animals. Never knew that. Another thing is that some jellyfish can actually go glow in the dark. 
and that is due to the bioluminescent um which you don't really see often but it is really found in comb jellies so comb jellies are a species of jellyfish and 90 percent of comb jellies are able to light up and produce light essentially which is pretty cool um the only downside to jellyfish is that are that they are short-lived creatures so their life expectancy is you know only a few months but if they are held in captivity they can live up to two to three years um but if they are on the smaller scale when they become an adult you know that they can only live up to a few days unfortunately so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed my video i hope you guys learned something about jellyfishes because this is definitely all new information to me so i'll see you guys bye